What is Hashimoto's? There's a lot of conversation out there. I want you to join Dr. Red and myself to learn all about this disease and problems that can be caused by your thyroid, here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world, now I'm living. And the good just gets better, keeps on giving. Not even close to the end, it's just beginning. Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah. And if the good, I won't even worry anymore. To call my care, still can kick them all out the door. Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for. Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah. Welcome to The Younger You. The exact cause of low thyroid disease is not known, but many factors are believed to play a role. I want to introduce you to Dr. Red, who specialises not only in low thyroid, but also Hashimoto's. How are you, Dr. Red? Good, how are you doing? Well, I want to talk to you a little bit about what is a low thyroid to begin with. Okay, this is when your thyroid will not produce the life-sustaining thyroid hormones that your body needs. Mm -hmm. This is crucial because your body uses thyroid hormones in pretty much every single aspect. And so every single cell in your body has a thyroid hormone receptor. So thyroid hormones are crucial. Okay, well, what are the symptoms? Well, depression, fatigue, anybody who lose weight, they'll even end up having anxiety, restlessness, insomnia. Oftentimes people with low thyroid will also struggle with intestinal issues as well. What are the main causes why people actually have a low thyroid? The number one cause is a disease called Hashimoto's disease. Mm. And this is where your immune system, instead of attacking bad things, starts attacking its own tissue. And it will destroy the thyroid tissue at a rapid pace and eventually cause a permanent low thyroid. So really, it's not a primary thyroid problem that's, that's the main cause. It's actually an autoimmune condition. Can I ask a really silly question? Yeah. Where's the thyroid? So the thyroid is, is right here, right in, the, okay. right in the middle of the neck. Um, and it's kind of like a butterfly shaped. Okay. Um, but that's, that's the main organ there. What are the proper tests to do regarding your thyroid? Most doctors will run a, what's called a TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone marker. How well, do they run that? Blood through the tests? blood work, yep, okay. through the blood work. They also run a T3 hormone as well, if you're lucky. But it's also important to make sure that we're running for the antibodies, because remember, Hashimoto's is the number one cause of low thyroid, so checking to see if you have this disease is crucial, and it can change the prognosis and, and outcome of care. So that test will be a TPO antibody, which is a thyroid peroxidase antibody, okay? Yeah. And then also an antithyroglobulin antibody as well. Those two markers running in conjunction with the TSH and T3 is, is a necessity. Would your normal GP run those tests? No. In a normal blood work? No, no, and, and even, even there's a lot of endocrinologists that won't. So uh, making sure that you, you know, be proactive and just have your doctor run those to be safe uh, is crucial. Is Hashimoto's genetic? What will end up happening is we'll have families that will all end up having Hashimoto's. Really? And what's interesting that we're seeing now is that it's about a nine to one female to male ratio. And so wow. if the grandma has low thyroid, then most likely the, the mom and the daughters will end wow. up having Hashimoto's and, and low thyroid as well. Why more in women? Well, the research is showing that the number one cause of this onset autoimmunity is due to increased estrogen levels. And so obviously females are more likely to have uh, estrogen surges and things like that. And so we're thinking that that turns the gene on and then once it turns on, then the autoimmune response starts destroying the thyroid tissue okay. and causes a permanent loss. Before we learn about the treatment options out there, Dr. Red, you want to introduce us to someone that you've been looking after. Yeah, we have a mother of two, her name's Karen, whose life was taken over by this disease. Okay, let's take a quick look. My name is Karen Durfee, I'm 30 years old. I'm a wife and mother of uh, two boys, one is four and a half and one is just turned two. Okay, so what was the heaviest that you were? About 190 pounds. This is baby fat before or after or just? Just kind of my steady weight for quite a few years. Did you know why you were overweight? No, I exercised regularly usually and ate well and I could not lose, I could always lose a couple pounds but then I always gained more back. Was this something that you had most of your life? Uh, no, it really kind of started right around when I was 20. I started noticing um, weight gain with college. Mm. Um, and then just marriage and everything, it just started piling on and I, there wasn't anything I could do to get it off. So when you were told mm -hmm. it was Hashimoto's, mm -hmm. there was a name for it. There's a disease called mm -hmm. that. What went through your mind? I saw that other people were feeling better and losing weight and happy and I knew I wanted it. Talk us through some of those symptoms. The biggest one was fatigue. I was so tired. Both of my boys napped and if I didn't get a nap while they napped, the day was just over for were me. Were you depressed? That kind of started coming right before I went in. 
um, and started getting help. I didn't know that that's what it was. I had never experienced it before, but I've been told that that's what I was going through was depression. I had no desire to do anything. Couldn't get off the couch. I couldn't play with my boys. I was just completely just run down. Had you been to a GP? I went and saw an endocrinologist and he just said, yeah, you have Hashimoto's, that a lot of people have it and your levels look good, come back in a year. And I was devastated. Uh, my thyroid is, is in my body, um, my neck area. Um, it's up here and I'm not sure what it does. But I know it's up here. My mom has thyroid cancer, so it's right here uh, within the neck area. I used to have a hyperthyroid, and I had to have thyroid medicine because I was always tired. Coming up after the break, Dr. Red is taking over the Younger You set as he interviews Dr. McLean all about the thyroid. Well, it's giveaway time here on The Younger You. Enter for your chance to win the $1,000 towards liposuction performed by Dr. Benjamin Dunkley. For more information, head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. The following footage contains actual surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. We're here with Dr. McLean, an endocrinologist at the University of Utah Healthcare. Dr. McLean, thanks for coming today. Oh, my pleasure. What are the most common symptoms that you see as an endocrinologist uh, with patients suffering with low thyroid? Well, from the way someone feels, you can think of thyroid hormone kind of as the thermostat of the body. And so if you don't have enough, uh, you turn things down and, and generally the body slows down. So you may gain weight, you may feel tired all the time, want to sleep uh, excessively. And on physical exam, your heart rate might be slow. Constipation yeah. is a common thing. Slow gut thing. motility. And that's right, and, and uh, dry skin uh, occurs also. Yeah. Now, what about hyperthyroid? Well, you know, in many ways, just the opposite. So you, you crank up the thermostat. The heart starts beating rapidly. <coughs> the person is anxious, uh, can't sleep at night. They feel their heart pounding in their chest, and then they lose weight. It's important to note, though, when they lose weight, they actually lose more muscle than fat. So it's not a good, good weight loss. It's yeah. a bad one. And that's where we often come and see the eyes bulging and, and that's all right that there's a particular well, kind of hyperthyroidism called Graves disease that also affects the muscles behind the eyes and they can actually push the eyes forward now the number one cause of low thyroid is, is a disease called called Hashimoto's which you know of the research is showing that close to 70 to 80 percent of these patients are suffering with Hashimoto's disease um, is that is that correct yeah that's correct that's by far the most common uh, cause we have. Uh, it can be diagnosed by the presence of antibodies to the thyroid um, and uh, uh, again that would be the most common. We also see people who've had their thyroids removed for one reason or the other and then there are a lot of rarer causes but most common is this autoimmune thyroiditis or Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So what are the advancements in detecting Hashimoto's and low thyroid disease? Well for low thyroid disease first of all the most important advancement was actually the discovery of assays for a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone. It's made up in your master gland, the pituitary. So when your pituitary senses your body doesn't have enough thyroid hormone, it tries to uh, whip the thyroid into yeah. shape and it produces this TSH. And that is as close to a perfect blood test as there is in most cases, not 100%, but in most, because it tells exactly what that person's body uh, needs in terms of thyroid hormone. So we can both detect high thyroid hormone and that suppresses and, yep. TSH and low raises yeah. it. Now Hashimoto's itself, we have uh, newer uh, antibody tests that are fairly sensitive in detecting that. And that can be important to be sure that it's Hashimoto's as yeah. opposed to another flavor because Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease. Your own immune system is attacking your uh, thyroid and in people who have that, they have also a predilection to having other autoimmune problems yep. and other glands. Which and so we can learn to watch out for those uh, in the clinic if they, if they yeah. have Hashimoto's. One of the things that we're doing test-wise is we're testing for 25 of the top autoimmune diseases. And a common thing we're seeing with Hashimoto's patients 
is myelin basic protein antibodies, and that's actually antibodies to the central nervous system. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite important to identify if you have an autoimmune disease and, and what autoimmune diseases there are. Uh -huh. right. Yeah, and in fact, <coughs> the antibodies that can also cause what we, an overactive thyroid hormone can occur in the same person that have the antibodies that destroy the thyroid yeah. hormone. So there's this uh, uh, balance of autoimmunity, and we're seeing more of that in our in our society today, and there are, there are theories about it, yeah. but no one really knows why. Yeah, for patients that are suffering with Hashimoto's, why would they also have hyperthyroid symptoms? What are your thoughts on that? Well, they're, uh, the most common, by far the most common thing I would see in clinic would be over-treatment. So if they're just given yeah. thyroid hormone replacement, they'll get a little too much, and, and then they will have, you know, the thermostat will yeah. be turned up and they'll have the opposite. Now, why would someone need their thyroid out? Can you explain to viewers why that is? There are several situations and, and it's certainly the minority of thyroid diseases we see. One would be thyroid cancer yeah. and uh, that would be pretty clear, although we're now finding that a lot of little tiny thyroid cancers are not going to bother you during life. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot more thyroid surgeries than yeah. we d were 10 years ago, and we haven't seen a big change in the rate of, of deaths from thyroid huh. uh, cancer. So we, we still need to learn what are the signs or yeah. is there a marker to say this one needs to come out, this one I'm yeah. not so worried about. Because some of these can be, you know, two millimeters and, and you'll die with them, you know, and yeah. they, never know you had them. But the majority, the good thing about this is the major majority of patients with thyroid cancer, I mean, if you're going to have a cancer, that's probably the best one to have, right? Because it's, it's easily curable, correct? It's a good one, yeah. But uh, there are some very aggressive forms that can spread, but in most cases, uh, uh, we take out the thyroid gland, we uh, ablate any residual yeah. thyroid with I radioactive iodine and then, uh, and then treat that person with thyroid oh, hormone and they do fine. Do you know what foods are good for your thyroid and those that are not? Well, after the break, Dr. Red is going to tell us all about it. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and join the Younger You conversation. It's important for everyone to take care of the thyroid, not just people with Hashimoto's. Dr. Red is going to be letting us know what foods can affect your thyroid. Then we'll be hearing from Karen. Okay, Dr. Red, I know all these things are good and bad. But how is it affecting your thyroid? The number one cause that will flare up the autoimmunity for Hashimoto's is gluten. But gluten's in so much food. I know. We're finding out now that a Hashimoto's patient will be intolerant to gluten almost just as much as someone that has celiac. How do you know within your body that you are allergic to gluten? What are the signs? Yeah. Intestinal problems, you might have uh, cramping, you might just have fatigue. I mean, okay. it, all that will happen is that when you eat gluten, it will cause the autoimmune response to flare up and it will destroy more of the thyroid tissue. So it will just heighten your symptoms more. So could you just, just to test yourself at home, just give up bread and pasta and wheats just for a week to see how you feel? Well, it, it might be more complicated than that, exactly. but you can. You can. You can stop for three months. And if that's the only trigger that you have, you'll, you'll notice a difference. Okay. Um, okay, I understand. Soy milk, normal milk? Soy increases estrogen, and estrogen will increase the autoimmunity. So if you have Hashimoto's and you're... you're eating a lot of soy and things like that, then, then that could be a problem due to the amount really? that will increase estrogen. But we've always been yep. told soya milk is fantastic for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So it's not, especially really? if you have Hashimoto's. Okay, what about almond milk? Almond milk's great. Oh. Coconut milk, Okay. Uh, I would transition more to those as well. I see you've got iodized salt here. Yeah. How is that different from sea salt? Well, what they're doing is they're taking salt and they're adding iodine to it. And what we're finding out now for Hashimoto's patients is that iodine can be a big trigger. Okay, but you can have sea salt? Yeah, sea salt. Okay. Sea salt. You're not That's saying fine. cut that out? Nope. nope. Um, sea I, I just noticed over here you've got what I would call gummy bears, <laughs> which are vitamin D. Yeah, and okay. if you're going to take vitamin D, don't eat the gummy bear kind. But what you can do and what the best source is, is vitamin D that you can put underneath the tongue. So it bypasses... Oh, in a liquid form? Yep, liquid form. Okay. Uh, so 
kind of like liquid drops, yes. put it underneath the tongue, and it will bypass the intestinal tract and go right into the bloodstream. That's the best thing that we're finding because a lot of our Hashimoto's patients will end up having poor absorption, poor digestion, and intestinal ah, issues and all that as so well. So by having poor absorption, that you're not actually getting all the nutrients that you need from exactly. the foods you're eating. Even if we gave them vitamin D to take orally, it might not absorb efficiently. So stay with the liquid. Yep. We get them at where? Yep. Health food stores? Any health food or store, just get the sub People like you. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Spices, turmeric, love that. What we're finding out now is that high doses of turmeric will really suppress the autoimmune response and really help calm it down. So yep. uh, it will increase re regulatory T cells, it will decrease what's called TH17 cells, which is awesome for the autoimmunity. So anyone that's suffering with an autoimmune disease, turmeric is, okay. is going to be your go to. Alright, of course, we've got the fruit and veggies, everyone. We know they're all good for us, no matter what. Yes, most, no? of, most of the vegetables Why are good. Why do I see a butt coming well, along? Corn can also be a trigger if you're intolerant to it. That so, I didn't know. Yep. So we actually know corn's a grain. It's not even a vegetable. You know, a diet composed of vegetables and fruits can be great. But then also, too, making sure that you eat every two to three hours is crucial. Okay. So eat like your lean meats and all that stuff as well. One right. big problem that we see, though, is that people that eat too much fruit can be just like eating Laffy oh, Taffy and sugar. I know, I love a banana. Yeah. I could eat five bananas in an and hour. And if you did that and you had Hashimoto's, it actually caused it to flare up. Too much fruit at one time will cause what's called an insulin surge. Okay. And that's also another huge trigger to flare up the autoimmunity. Okay. You're saying that if you eat too much fruit, is there a particular fruit that you shouldn't be eating at all? Not necessarily, okay. but you're going to have to be really careful with watermelon. Watermelon has a high sugar content, and so obviously minimize the amount of watermelon that you eat. Dr. Ed and I will discuss some treatment options in just a little bit, but before I do that, I want to check back in with Karen to find out about what she did after she found out she had Hashimoto's. Take a look. How is it Hashimoto's taking over your life? It took over completely. I. I knew I needed to start my own little business to help with family income and there was nothing anyone could do to make me get started to do it. I, I literally laid on the couch for just days and watched my kids play. Did you cry? Oh yeah. <laughs> Did you I was just, miserable. What made you research more and realize there were people out there that actually treated um, I had seen a few commercials. I have a sister-in-law that had heard of Red River and um, so I just decided I just got on the internet. Initial consultation, disaster. Said yeah. you had it, didn't know what to do with it. Uh -huh. Come back in a year. You did the internet, you found out what it actually was all about, who's servicing mm -hmm. you to be able to do this. So of course you find my good friend, Dr. Joshua Red, yes. who we all adore. Yes, Okay, you go in, talk me through the system. They went in and met with me and just kind of wanted to know about me, um, how my life had been up to that point, mm. symptoms. So like a, a verbal consultation? Yes, basically. And then um, asked if we wanted to move into some uh, preliminary testing, basically. Um, so when you blood say work, test, like okay, that. blood work, mm -hmm. not putting little things on your head no, to see it was all, okay. it was all mostly <laughs> lab, lab work, stuff okay. like that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> How has the treatment affected our patient, Karen? Find out after the break. Well, it's giveaway time here on The Younger You. Enter for your chance to win $1,000 towards liposuction performed by Dr. Benjamin Dunkley. For more information, head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. Check out The Younger You website to watch full episodes of the show, read about our product of the week and get useful tips and tricks to help you achieve The Younger You. Dr. Red will be joining me once again in the studio to hear more about this particular disease. That's right, it is a disease. Then we're going to chat to Karen to find out how this treatment has changed her life. Why is it that some people on thyroid hormone treatment still feel no improvement? Well, here's the problem is because if you remember, the number one cause is the autoimmune disease, right? Mm. So these patients will develop a low thyroid, be placed on a thyroid hormone, but the immune system continues to rage and destroy tissue of the thyroid and also cause problems throughout the whole body as well. So it's far more detailed and comprehensive than just a, a thyroid problem. Now we're dealing with an autoimmune problem and that's simply why these patients will feel little to no improvement. What do you do to help someone? So here's the important thing. We take everything we know about thyroid problems, hmm. we crumble up in our hands and then we throw it in the trash, right? Because these patients aren't suffering from a primary thyroid problem. 
they're suffering from an autoimmune disease. And so it's important for us to get to the mechanism of why these patients feel bad. Okay, well, can you get rid of the disease or this is something you're gonna have for the this rest of your life? This is something you're gonna have for the rest of their lives. So you have to really, one, go in and help calm down the autoimmune response, but then also show them the dietary and lifestyle things that they can do to help, you know, really keep this in check and keep it calmed down. So a big part of what we do is, is more education, just to really teach these patients so that they can be the expert in their own health. Hmm. And don't get me wrong, these patients still have to be on a thyroid hormone, and so we're working in conjunction with their medical doctor, endocrinologist. We have some of our great friends who are out there. But it, it takes, you know, both of us to really get to the, you know, achieve the best outcome for the patient. But how are you doing that? Through blood work? We do and lots, diet and exercise? Lots of blood work, uh, diet, looking in detail at the physiological imbalances and then trying to improve those imbalances. Okay. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, a pretty comprehensive approach to these patients. Dr. Red, one of our viewers wrote in this question which I wanted to ask you. A lot of people <coughs> have all the thyroid symptoms but the tests come back normal. I hear that all the time. Is there anything else that would cause somebody to feel like they have a low thyroid. Yeah. So the Hashimoto's, which we already talked about. Yeah. We I have get what's that. yep. We have what's called an underconversion problem of the thyroid. What is that part? This is basically where your thyroid produces what what's called a T4 hormone. Okay. Ninety three percent of what your hormones are produced are, are T4 hormones. Okay. And your body has to convert that T4 hormone, which is an inactive hormone. Your body can't do anything with it into an active thyroid hormone. Okay. So if patients aren't converting that T4 into T3 like it should they're gonna have thyroid problems. There's Ooh. also called a, a protein binding problem of the thyroid. This is where you have protein in your body that will transport the thyroid hormones. And when it gets to that area, they might hold on to those thyroid hormones, and so your body can't use it efficiently. And that's called a protein binding problem of the thyroid. Okay, Yeah. would that be an issue if you're not eating the right foods? Not Would necessarily. That conversion, it just happens. Yep. The protein binding problem occurs due to either high testosterone or high estrogen. Gotcha. Uh, and so that. So that's, that's what truly not for. about dietary. Mm -mm. Okay. Nope. It's truly about the body. The itself. physiological system. Okay, yep. I understand. Yep. Before we wrap up the show, I want to check back in with Karen to find out how your treatments actually changed her life. Great. Take a look. You woke up one day and you go, oh, a breath. Mm -hmm. I, feel I have good. energy. How long? Did that sort of yeah, take Yeah, really, honestly, within the first couple of weeks, I started really? to notice a difference. So it was, say, three weeks? Yeah, I woke up feeling like I could get something done that Really? Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel? No, I know you feel better. Uh-huh. But how did that make you feel mentally? I knew that what I was doing was right and that I could be even better. Like, there was just no going back from what I was doing once I knew. I didn't have to live the way I used to. If anything, that mothers out there watching this who have some affiliation with you, mm -hmm. Go at, regard, you could end up at a doctor's office mm -hmm. or someone like Dr. Redden goes, you don't have Hashimoto's. Yeah. This is a good thing. Yeah, no, yeah, you know, I would love to not the, have this, but yeah. that's the way it is. The more people I talk to, like you, the more I feel that it is an illness that is undiagnosed. Oh, absolutely. There are lots of symptoms, oh, but yeah. those symptoms just need to be diagnosed properly yeah. and ticked off, as you said, one yeah. by one. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was the very interesting thing to know that I was heading towards other certain illnesses, yeah. but it was all because of Hashimoto's. So to, to address that, I was able to prevent and fix so many things that good I was you. worried about for a long good time. Good for you. Well, good job. Thank you. And good luck for Thank your you. future health as well. Thank you very Thank much. You. Before we go, Dr. Red, any last thoughts for the people watching at home on what they can do if they're having or think they have a thyroid disorder? So here's the thing. Find and do the right test. I think this is crucial. Okay. okay. And then even after that, if you end up having Hashimoto's or, or some type of complicated thyroid problem, look for a doctor that focuses on functional medicine. He can look in detail what's really the underlying problem that's causing the symptoms, right? Okay. And that's what we want to get at. So right. look for that. Dr. Red, thank you so much. I truly Thanks appreciate for you me. coming thank in. You. Hashimoto's is the most common thyroid disorder in America. I had no idea. Affecting more than 14 million people in the United States alone. If you have any of the symptoms that we listed today, ask your doctor about a low thyroid. For more information about the show, head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you next week. Next week on The Younger You, we'll be watching a facelift that is non-surgical. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.